Hello, so I'm uh, here to tell you today about uh, how to uh, how to prove uh, vector calculus. relations. Now in class, we talked about one particular relation, uh, that is del cross, hmm, del cross A uh, is equal to the gradient of the divergence of A uh, plus The, uh, or sorry, minus, minus the Laplacian A. And before we start this, we want to do this in, uh, sorry about that. That's what these pens are doing there for. They're supposed to hold on to the focus for me. So, before we start, uh, we need to um, think about the uh, how to write these things in terms of uh, components. That is the that's the trick, as it were. And so, if I want to write a dot product, a dot b, well, that's the sum over i of a times i, b times i. And that seems nice and easy and straightforward. <clears throat> and it is. Uh, <clears throat> now I try to write a cross b the same way. And it is no longer <laughs> straightforward or easy. Instead, we have to define something. Uh, and we're now summing over three things of uh, epsilon i j k, which I'll define in a minute, uh, times e at i a j e k, where the e here is a unit vector. Right, x hat, y hat, z hat, or e1, e2, e3, all hats. And these, of course, are components of A. <clears throat> now, the order is got to be critical here if we're doing derivatives. So the, the idea of derivatives here. Is that the order is important, right? Because if a or b is, say, a derivative, then we can't, you know, move a to the other side of it because then we're not taking the derivative the way they're supposed to, and we have to be careful about that. <clears throat> now, what is this epsilon i j k? This is the perfectly uh, anti-symmetric tensor. So, uh, what does that mean? Well, let's take epsilon one, two, three is equal to plus one. Now, uh, what we mean by, uh, a symmetry is if we take epsilon i j k and we kind of rotate it around like this, that's equal to epsilon, okay, if we put the k over there, it's k i j is equal to epsilon, do it again, j k i. 
And now if we, this is to rotate. And if we take epsilon i, j, k, and we swap to, so it's epsilon j, i, k, is a minus sign. So that minus sign there, that goes with the anti-symmetric. <clears throat> and these rules right here specify every element of epsilon i, j, k. Because I can start one, two, three, and I can rotate it around to get the others. And then I can swap two, and I can rotate those around, minus ones. And that tells me every element of epsilon i, j, k. It's either a plus one, a minus one, or a zero. And of course, because uh, because of the anti-symmetry, now epsilon i i k equals epsilon uh, i j j is equal to epsilon i j i is equal to zero because it's equal to its negative. Uh, so this is, uh, this rule means a good fraction of the elements are in fact zero. It falls from this relation down here. <clears throat> and so that's pretty much where you're getting the zeros from. And if you don't have uh, any repeated indices, by then it's going to be a plus one or a minus one, depending on which sort of cycle it belongs to. Uh, okay, now uh, a rule we almost always use is the fact that if we sum uh, over k epsilon i j k epsilon p q k that's going to be equal to delta i p delta j q minus because of the anti-symmetry uh, delta where we swap here it's i q uh, delta j p that's going to show up in almost every single proof that we use <clears throat> okay so now let's uh Think about the case at hand, right? So uh, if we write out, um, start with the left side, right? Del cross del cross A. What is that going to be equal to? Well, uh, it's um, sum i j k of let's just do the outer product uh it's the um uh, epsilon i j k we're just using this relation right up here e hat i <clears throat> and then the first one is the del, so that I'm going to write that one as del j, and then it's del cross a k. And we can do the same thing, re repeat another sum here, and this is going to be equal to uh, sum of uh, I, J, 
<clears throat> now remember, this is just the kth term here of the um, of, of the uh, of the curl, and so we don't end up with we just kind of drop drop the first sum, right? So it's um, uh, we still have the sum i j k, and we uh, now just need two more because we don't need the equivalent uh, <clears throat> e sub first one over there, and so this is uh, epsilon i j k uh, del j. And we have epsilon, remember the, the first one would be the component. So that's the K. And uh, we have LM. And it's uh, delta L. Uh, A sub M. And then what did I forget? I didn't write the e hat i. Got to stick that on the end there. So uh, this is we're going to use this formula, right? <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Need to keep that in your place. So we, we're going to use this formula right here, and so. The one where something has to be at the end, right? And so this one here is equal to epsilon. If we want the k at the back, let's rotate it that way. So it's lmk. <clears throat> and that gives us a sum over k. So if we take this one out, we're going to do the sum over k, and that's going to give us these delta functions. So now our sum is over i j l m and e hat sub i is still there let me get that down the front remember we have to get derivatives so we've got to watch the order uh, and our delta things here uh, come on to okay it's the first the first the second with the second is what comes first so we have uh, i k and delta j l Minus mix the other way, I L uh, delta J K. <clears throat> and then these kept in order delta J delta L A C M. Okay, let's um, use these to remove the L's and K's, right? We can move whatever we want. So if we sum over L, it's going to be zero in the first term except for it's J, and the second term except for it's uh, um, I, <clears throat> and, and the same for the other. So this now drops to a sum over simply I and J, E hat I. And we're going to have two terms. Uh, the first term here is going to be i and k are the same, and j and l are the same. So i and k, there's no k's over here. Uh, but j and l, wait a minute. Uh, we had an l and an m. And, oh, I see what I did wrong. I did KL instead of LM. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, oh, I see, because I was using this. Oh, sorry, I used that one. I should have used this one. Okay, let's go back and fix this. So, um, <clears throat> I goes with L, J goes with M. So, this is L, M. This is M, L. <clears throat> there we go. And now we're selling over L and M. So uh, L is going to be I in the first term, L, J, L, I. 
and m is going to be the same as j, a, j. And the second term here, i is going to be the uh, j stays the same. Uh, this delta is l goes is j. And we have a in this term, I mean, m in this term goes to i. And if we look at this now, <clears throat> uh, we can interchange those two because they're both first order derivatives. And uh, sum over j, del j, aj is equal to uh, del dot a. And that's. <clears throat> Uh, and we also have the um, other relation here that uh, e hat i, sum over i, e hat i del i is equal to del as the vector. <clears throat> over here, uh, that's del dot del is equal to Laplacian. And okay, e uh, e i hat sum a i is a vector, <clears throat> and so we can write this down. Once we do out both sums, right? This is doing one sum. That's the other. That's the sum over i. That's the sum over j. And so uh, the first term here simply becomes the gradient of del dot a. And the second term has got a minus and it's Laplacian of the vector a. And we know exactly what that means now. Uh, it's Laplacian of ax in the x direction, Laplacian of ay in the y direction, Laplacian of ay in the z direction. And this is the relation that we set out to prove. So generally speaking, this is how it works. When you have a vector identity that you want to prove, you say, okay, let's start with the left side. We'll use these things to get it into components. The anti-symmetric tensor comes in. Uh, when you write it all out, it's either going to be trivial or you're probably going to have to use this. Otherwise, you wouldn't be proving it this way. Uh, that came in here, and we had two cross products. And uh, you then kind of rearrange things into things you recognize. What do you recognize? You recognize stuff like this. <laughs> and then uh, back on the other side is, in fact, our answer. So this is how you prove vector differential calculus um, information. Notice on the end here, something I didn't really write down is that the gradient, well, this right here, the gradient is ddx in the x direction, ddy in the y direction, ddc in the z direction. That's how you'd write that down in addition to those relations. Okay, so that is, that's our, um, our, our, uh, that's our lecture. Let me, uh,